This is the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. We're sick of the games that the media plays. We're sick of the media cramming down our throats who a candidate, who our candidate is, is going to be. We're, we're independent voters, and the, despite that filter of the media, we're going to make up our own mind. Governor Palin calls out the GOP on some cannibalistic tactics that will hurt the conservative cause. She also speaks up about some changes on Alaska Airlines. And we're joined today by a great conservative voice, the very talented and bright Kate Obenshane is here. Obenshane is known for her work with the very worthwhile Young America's Foundation. She also can be seen spreading a conservative message on many a TV panel, and she was featured very prominently in the Sarah Palin film The Undefeated, the great, great work of Stephen K. Bannon. Please check out my review of the film on saranet.net. Just click on Kevin Shola. Kate is a grad of UVA, and she was the editor of the campus conservative newspaper, The Virginia Advocate. Today, she's our special guest. Kate Obenshane, thanks for entering the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. How you been? I'm great, Kevin. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. And first off, Virginia doing better, huh? Made a bowl game this season, and now basketball is nationally ranked. Well, thanks for pointing that out. Yes, we're very excited. We're hopeful about our basketball season. Anytime we lose to Virginia Tech, it is an abysmal defeat. But, hey, there's always next year. You know, always so good in the non-major sports, and now it's nice to see them, you know, <laughs> rocking it in football and basketball. So Yeah, we're great at tennis and lacrosse, all the game, all the sports nobody watches, but, hey. <laughs> rooting from you from afar. but uh, Thank you. <laughs> so you are the VP of Young America's Foundation, a tremendous group. Can you tell our listeners about what you do? I sure can. Um, about 13 years ago, Young America's Foundation saved President Reagan's ranch out in Santa Barbara, California, when it was on the market. Nobody wanted to buy it. The state of California wouldn't save it. The um, president wouldn't save it. And so Young America's Foundation, which has been around for now almost, um, gosh, 45 years, we stepped forward to preserve the ranch exactly as President Reagan left it, not just because we love President Reagan, but because it's a living embodiment of the principles that he valued, freedom, um, individual initiative, personal responsibility. And um, our, our um, mission for all these years, for these 45 years, has been to pass along conservative values to young people. And we all know that the conservative campuses, I mean, the campuses are completely controlled by leftist ideologues. I mean, it's literally a lockdown in terms of intellectual um, discourse and the free and open exchange of ideas. It doesn't happen anymore. And so the foundation has stepped forward sending great conservative speakers like um, Ann Coulter, Michelle Malkin, um, all the really all the strong, powerful names in the conservative movement. We send them to conserv We send them out to campuses, and often it's the only conservative voice that a college student hears in the four years. So we have conferences on both the East and the West Coast. We have conferences at the Reagan Ranch and our Reagan Ranch Center in Santa Barbara. We have preserved President Reagan's beautiful, beloved. Rancho Del Cielo in Santa Barbara, exactly as he left it. And we take young people there all the time. And we have great conferences on the West, East Coast as well. And we were thrilled to have Governor Palin um, speak at President Reagan's um, 100th birthday celebration last February. It was just an incredible celebration. And um, it really was the high point of our celebration that Governor Palin wanted to be there because she so treasured um, the legacy that President Reagan has left. Well, I know you are a huge fan of Governor Palin, and I you, am. you were one of the stars, if you will, of Steve Bannon's great film, The Undefeated, which really captured Sarah Palin's rise through the ranks. I liked a lot of the commentary in that movie from everybody. It is you know, such a great work, top to bottom. But I must say, you stood out to me in one aspect. You really were able to express on screen your joy and excitement for Palin as a person, a leader, and a yeah. candidate, and really a sentiment I share. And when I watched you in The Undefeated and your exuberance, it made me think back to how I felt the day McCain introduced her as his running mm -hmm. mate. It was really a where were you when moment for me, and I'm sure for you as well. I will never forget that moment. In fact, I shared that with her, that with her when I met her at the ranch. 
um, that I have been involved in politics for years, of course, and when I ran for Republican Party chairman of Virginia, I remember the consultant that was sort of assigned to me back when I was a complete newbie in politics. Um, I was talking to him on the phone, and he heard my children in the background, and he said, uh... You make sure that nobody hears those kids in the background when you're asking people to support you. And I was shocked and I was hurt and I was stunned, but I didn't let people hear my kids in the background. You know, I found people for them to be with or found, you know, put them in front of the TV or whatever. And when I saw Governor Palin walk onto that stage when um, John McCain announced her as his running mate, and I saw her holding that precious baby boy and surrounded by her family. Literally, Kevin, I stood up and cheered at the top of my lungs, not only because I knew she was a conservative, I knew she actually believed what she said, but because she was involved because of her children. That's why I'm involved, because I love my children. They are the motivating factor in my life, and nobody is ever going to tell me not to have my children front and center. And when I told her the story just about how I stood up and cheered when I saw her, particularly because she was so proud of her family. She said, Kate, don't ever let them tell you that again. And I said, trust me, I never will. And she was just such an inspiration for me as a conservative woman who has borne a lot of attacks, nothing like she has um, borne. But, you know, as conservative women, when we put ourselves out there, we can just rest assured that we will be attacked more viciously than anyone else because I do think that conservative women represent the greatest threat to liberal liberals and liberalism and, frankly, the Democrat Party, because for so long um, the, the left has taken women for granted. And now they see these, these women who are deciding which party to support or lifelong Democrats are seeing these articulate, attractive, strong, conservative women like Sarah Palin, like Ann Coulter, like Michelle Malkin, Nikki Haley. I mean, the list, Susanna Martinez, the list goes on and on in thanks in large part to um, Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman. Um, They see these women and they think, hey, maybe these women have a point to make. I thought all women were Democrats. And so I think we do (laughs) represent the greatest threat to liberals because if they lose women, trust me, they're done. Oh, right. I mean, I've said it all along. I mean, as much as they hated the Bushes and Cheneys of the world, they always said, well, you know what, older, white, Christian males, whatever. But when a woman shows up or a minority, oh, boy, they they almost take it personally and say, hey, we have them. And I mean, and and how just uh, just pompous to think you can categorize people by their sex or their color and, and then say that that's done by the right. And, you know, that whole thing. But as far as family and things like that, I mean, I've said it all the time why I even do this show. It's really because of my daughter. I mean, who better to look up to than a Governor Palin. Yeah, I've said that all along. And you mentioned about her holding the baby and things like that. Uh, I've seen her speak a few times, and, and I know at the uh, pro-life rallies and whatnot, uh, or even if it's not a rally about life, no matter the topic, when a kid cries, she'll always say, hey, listen, let him cry. It's fine. That that means oh, there's yeah. life in here, and you know, you got to love that. Now, uh, another thing um, I've appreciated from you, uh, Kate, is the way you've handled Palin's decision to not run for president this year. Um, I, look, I, I'm disappointed. I know a lot of people are, but instead of being part of the draft committees or being in denial or, or this threatening to still write in Palin, thus helping Obama clearly, um, you've come out early on to say, look, Palin's not running, but her message is still alive, and now let's work on removing Obama. So unless something crazy happens, we are down to the final four here on the GOP side. Do you see any of these guys having the moxie to win in November? I think any of them can win in November. I think it's just a matter of whether, um, for instance, I mean, you have to talk about the specific candidates. I think Rick Santorum could win no problem. I think he's got the stamina. I think he's got the brains. I think he's got the guts and the conservative instincts. Newt has got um, a little more baggage, and, of course, he's a little more unpredictable, but he's certainly got um, the conserv- an understanding of conservative principles, and he is probably is definitely a conservative movement guy who's been um, come up through the movement, and um, I think that is really important. Somebody who instinctively understands conservatism. So both he and Santorum fall into that category, and that's what we need to be able to win, um, Kevin. We need somebody, uh, a candidate, who just truly understands that 
that um, urge of the Tea Party movement, what brought out all these hardworking Americans who have no interest, no interest in holding up signs and protesting. Um, we need somebody who understands why they are, have motivated and why they got out there and turned around the 2010 elections. Um, Mitt Romney, I think he can win. I think he's got a, a, a tougher um, challenge ahead of him because he's not as clearly distinct from Barack Obama. And he's got to be able to prove over the next couple of months whether or not he can really deliver some body blows to Obama in terms of um, a, um, really challenging him on his philosophy. This whole, I heard him the other day, oh gosh, actually it was a couple of weeks ago, when he said, Barack Obama has weakened our economy. He hasn't meant to, but he has. Right. That's not it. That doesn't. That does not even begin to express. I think Barack Obama is a very smart man. Not the smartest man in the world, but he's smart and he knows exactly what he's doing. He is fundamentally transforming the United States of America. And if it means that we suffer economically, that um, we go through these recessions, that um, our productivity declines and our prestige in the world declines, so be it. Um, as long as we redistribute wealth and we try to equalize if it means that we as a society decline, so be it. Well, you know what? Mitt Romney has got to be able to articulate that in a strong, compelling manner that says, I am not afraid of this man. I will say exactly what he's done and exactly um, what it's doing to the greatness of our country. I mean, it's not – he said – Barack Obama is weakening America? No, he is bringing it to the brink of destruction. He is, freedom is on the precipice, and those freedoms that our founding fathers fought and died for are on the verge. As Ronald Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. And we need somebody who's bold enough and courageous enough and principled enough to be able to articulate those principles. Yeah, he's also gone that route, you know, of saying Obama's over his head, and I think this is almost what people heard four years ago with uh, uh, John McCain. They want you to say, no, Barack Obama knows exactly what he's doing, and, and conservatives and most Americans don't like that path. So right. we'll see. That right. is a good point. Uh, let me ask you this. Any predictions, or, or maybe better put, any hopes for Governor Palin? Do you, do you expect her to be in the next administration if the Republican wins? Maybe run for office, whether it's president or Senate seat? And any best guess? I know she likes to keep all of us guessing and it, it's fun to see the liberals go nuts with every time she tweets or or sends a, a facebook message out but uh, uh what do you think uh, any idea well let me just say i wanted her to run for president i was not one of these who said oh i just want her to continue to influence the dis discourse and discussion as she is now i think that those were people who want were basically saying i don't want her to run for president i wanted her to run uh, i don't actually want her to serve in um if if we have if we're blessed enough to have a republican administration which i'm not taking for granted i don't want her to serve in the administration because i think she's far more effective um really fighting on the outside and fighting for conservative principles passing along to young people and understanding of what is conservatism, what is American exceptionalism, what are our traditional values, because really I think our challenge is the next generation, the generation that voted for Obama in overwhelming numbers. It's, ex it's explaining to young people in a compelling way, which he does so beautifully, what, it, what is this instinctive conservatism that she believes in? Um, I would prefer to see her sort of on the outside. Yeah, I think she could run for anything she wants, but I sort of think she's bigger than running for Senate or Congress or governor again. I think she, um, maybe four years from now, um, she'd run for president. I think um, I'd, I'd love to see her studying the greats like Hayek and Von Mises and Adam Smith and um, just coming in um, – you know what? She's a mom right now. She's got a little girl, just like I have a little girl two years younger than Piper is. And there, this is no time in our life to be, frankly, um, putting our kids on the back burner and running for something like president. So I've, I'd love to see her raise her family, as I know is her number one priority, and that's why she didn't run for president. But I'd love to see her preparing and thinking and learning and studying and speaking and articulating those values because I do think that God puts us in particular positions in our lives to prepare us for the next um, next phase. And I think this per perhaps is um, preparation and growth and um, a time for Governor Palin to really 
completely blossom in that gift that God has given her to inspire massive numbers of Americans to be courageous and stand up for freedom as she has done like no one else has done. I mean, nobody's been attacked like she has, attacked like she has. And every time she's attacked, you know what? She just comes back stronger. Um, it's like um, Tammy Bruce said about the, in that movie, um, The Undefeated, when she said she's like the Marines. She just goes towards the trouble, goes towards the danger. Nothing cowers her. Nothing defeats her. She just goes forward even when she is attacked so viciously. And I think that that is absolutely a gift. And that courage that she um, just has so beautifully within herself, that is something that our young people need to see because right now they are coward. They are scared. They're scared on these campuses to voice any objection to Barack Obama, for one, because of the political correctness, because they're going to be called racist, um, because they're going to be attacked if they're women. Um, I think sh- there is no greater example of courage and conviction and standing up for what you believe in than Sarah Palin, and we need that in our country right now. And I love the point you make about Piper. I thought the same thing as far as the kids and Trig as well. You know, again, yeah. nobody wanted her to run more than me, but if she's going to make a decision, and I also agree with you, I think the largest thing is about her family. I cannot disagree with that at all, and I'm happy yeah. for her because I think she is at peace with the decision. And again, like you said, 2006. 2020. She's a young woman. I mean, you, oh, you look at the candidates young. now. Newt Gingrich is 68 years old. You see Ron Paul, what is 76, is he? I mean, she's got many, many things down the road. If she wants to go that route, we'll see. But Kate Obenshade, thank you so much again for joining us. We really appreciate it. And behave yourself, okay? Kevin, thanks so much for having me. God bless you and God bless all your listeners. Kate Obenshane on the Palin Update. Check out Young America's Foundation at yaf.org. Lots of good stuff there. Wonderful Ronald Reagan material. And Kate is just tremendous. A true patriot and conservative leader. Well, Governor Palin ripped Republicans this past week in a Facebook posting titled Cannibals in GOP Establishment Employ Tactics of the Left. The governor says we have witnessed something disturbing referring to the Republican establishment and its opposition to the grassroots Tea Party movement. Governor Palin says Republicans have adopted the tactics of the left in using the media and the politics of personal destruction to attack an opponent. A really important read. You can check it out on Sarah Palin's Facebook page. Meantime, the Gov called out the media again, pointing to the unfair treatment Congressman Paul and Speaker Gingrich have received of late. With the announcement that Alaska Airlines may discontinue its decades-long tradition of including a prayer card on flight meal trays, Governor Palin expressed her dismay. In fact, she penned a letter to Alaska Airlines, and she encourages other customers to speak up. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Visit saranetradio.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, follow us on Twitter at Saranet Radio, and we are now on Facebook, so make sure you like Saranet Radio on Facebook. I want to thank everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Kate Obenshane, and thank you for listening today. Join us next time for another edition of the Palin Update. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.